Hello and welcome to this video for ElectroPages. I'm your host, Robert Mitchell. Today we're here in Munich Electronica 2024 and it's been an absolutely fantastic event and I'm joined by Colin from Rochester Electronics. Thank you for having us today. Thank you. Now, just before we dive into this video, we've got a couple of questions for the sake of the audience. Could you start by uh, telling them who you are, what you do, and what you like to do in your free time? Okay. Um, Colin Strother, Executive Vice President of Rochester Electronics. I've uh, been with the company for 17 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a number of different hats. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully some of them fit. Uh, in my spare time, I like to keep fit mm -hmm. and I follow Glasgow Rangers. Fantastic. And it also seems to me that in your free time, you like to not shake people's hands as you left me hanging about two minutes ago. No, uh, only <laughs> your hand. Fantastic. Anyway, so Electronica this year has been absolutely fantastic and we've seen you guys before and, and, and I don't know, we've had, we've had some great conversations about wake storage and all this kind of stuff. But really, the first question for you is, tell us what's going on today, what you guys are bringing to the show what's basically changed since we last talked to you. Okay, so um, digital transformation is an area that we're really focused on and I think a lot of our customers, they're looking for companies that can drive innovation, uh, they're looking for efficiency and effectiveness of engagement, um, they're looking to automate, yeah. uh, they're looking for relationships, right. partnerships, and you know, Rochester's perhaps known for more legacy applications, so where does that fit from an innovation perspective? So our ongoing source of supply allows customers to drive their innovation by focusing their time and efforts and engineering resources on new, new products mm. rather than having to spend time um, addressing challenges with more legacy uh, project dependent programs. So you, know, you talk about like, like digital transformations, dig digital uh, innovations, sorry. Um, and yet you, d despite all these new technologies, Obsolescence is still a massive issue, even for modern technology. So let's just, let's start with this question then. So what do you see as the biggest challenge in this modern sort of time? Despite all these modern changes, what, what challenge do engineers still face with obsolescence? I, I think um, it's, it's more reactive, right? So mm. we have the world's largest in-stock inventory and we have the world's largest silicon dye bank, mm. uh, but quite often, you know, because we're not a typical mainstream supplier, uh, companies come to find hard to find parts from us a little bit more reactively. So in terms of our engagement, what we really encourage is customers work with us a lot more proactively and um, share information with us. So for example, on our commerce platform, rockalike.com, uh, uh, you can sign up as a, as a registered user, yeah. it's a secure experience, you can upload your parts list, your bills of material, and then you can sign up for automated alerts, whether that's changes in lead time, life cycle status, incoming inventory, um, if you place scheduled orders, uh, you know, notifications that your order, maybe, you know, your schedule may be depleting. Mm -hmm. uh, so taking a more proactive um, stance, and using AI as well, trusted AI, so we, we, we don't use any third party data. No. So we would take customers' parts, for example, and using AI, we are able to identify, say, for example, alternates and associates. And we, we have um, hyper personalization at scale, which means that we're providing relevant information to you on what products you use based on the information that you have provided, right? Because there's a lot of digital saturation at the moment yeah. where people get spammed. So engaging customers in that way uh, with our suppliers, it's automated data exchange with a lot of our customers as well. It's um, inventory APIs, pricing APIs, transactional APIs. So we're, we might not always be thought of at maybe the leading edge of technology. Uh, the, the opposite is the case in terms of our um, our, our digital transformation. So I'm just going to pick up on one point you mentioned, which is about AI. Is this a relatively new venture you guys have been working on? So we, we, uh, a couple of years ago, we decided that we wanted to really try to get to a, a single view of the customer, a customer yep. 360. And what, what we had was we'd got a number of different systems, CRM, CPQ, ERP, and you know, the nomenclature in our industry, the verbiage, even as you categorize a customer, uh, CEM, CMS, EMS, for example, microprocessor, microcontroller, yeah. and you know, what we found was that we had a lot of data in a lot of different places yeah. that we couldn't really make sense of. So we've, with Salesforce, we brought it all together into one place as a single source of truth. Now that you've got 
you know, uh, a single source of truth, then you can add some intelligence to it. And what we're really looking for is to kind of get insights and actionable intelligence. So from an AI perspective, we, we, we have a superhero called Captain Rochester. And it's a little bit of fun. And he was, he was brought to life a number of years ago to fight uh, counterfeit mm. devices, right? Where we're 100% authorized. And there was his nemesis, Count Der Fitter, right? So it was a little bit of fun. And uh, we kind of retired Captain Rochester, but we kind of lucked out because of the way Captain is spelled, AI. So we are, we've brought him back, and he's the industry's first AI superhero. Mm. So we're working with Salesforce on our AI agent, and what, what, what this really means is the ability to ask questions using natural language. So uh, uh, something we're looking at is feeding in data sheets, yeah. for example, into our platform. And instead of having to categorize and filter, right, you go into rockcollect.com, I, I want a microcontroller, I want yeah. this type of package, this type of, of temp range, mm -hmm. you could just ask the question. I want a microcontroller with some things in it, and it just goes, right, here's the best for the closest. Exactly, and, and the ability yeah. to take unstructured and unstructured data and then respond to that query, you know, we, we think that's a very valuable thing that will get customers to the answers a lot a lot quicker. So that's that's where we're headed on. Uh, as our initial kind of drive into AI, but I, I, I got to stress, uh, unless you have clean data in the first instance, it's utter nonsense. And, and, and you know, the funny thing is, I, I've actually played with a, quite a number of newer uh, AI models as, as they've been coming out, and I've actually started to see that they've been training on synthetic data, so you do start to see more hallucinations, the performance does start to go down. Now that, it's, like I say, it's been completely saturated, uh, now they're relying on data being generated by AI to put back into AI, so it doesn't really do a very yeah. good job. But this is this is a really interesting thing, and it's, 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 I like the term, I actually quite like the term AI superhero. It's the way it's, it's one of the first, it sounds like it's one of the first tools that actually trying to do, sort of like protect engineers from, you know, counterfeits, potential damages, and sort of that kind of stuff. Um, but I want to quickly bring it back to, you, you mentioned about one of the biggest challenges, which is reacting. And I think we saw this sort of during the COVID period as well, whereby, because engineering companies and suppliers and distributors it's quite, it's quite, um, the, the ba there's a lot of barriers to communication and, and nobody knows what the market really wants mm -hmm. to do. So because of that, no one really knows how many people want this part or they don't know when they're going to need it or no one knows what the distributor's talking to with, with suppliers. So you, find, you get a very disconnected sort of uh, a network of, of sort of suppliers and customers. And so when a part does finally become end of life, it's suddenly sort of, it takes people by, it completely sidewinds them. Does it, yeah. They don't even know it's going to happen, and suddenly, oh, a part you were, were relying on, now, it's now no longer being manufactured. That's right, that's right. So, you know, during the pandemic, um, Rochester has about 15 billion units of inventory in stock at the moment. Yep. And um, that's, that's a larger inventory portfolio than pre-pandemic, mm. and maybe uh, about five billion of that is active components, that it's not obsolete. So what we do is we work with our um, suppliers. Is that in anticipation of obsolescence? Originally, that was maybe the idea, but mm. what, what happened is, is for example, you know, there may be excess product, yeah. and um, you know, the suppliers want to make sure that that, that uh, is, you know, remains within the authorized channel, and you know, especially today with you know, you know, the geopolitical situation with a U.S.-based company. Uh, export compliance is is unequivocal, so you know it's a safe repository for the components. Yeah. Uh, so we also manage the distribution rotations. So perhaps uh, you know the active distributors have some slower moving parts, and they're able to rotate it back for a credit. Yeah. We 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 manage that process on behalf of the suppliers. So view Rochester as a complementary part of the authorized channel. Mm -hmm. The the fact that we tend to support a lot of EOL products and programs, uh, don't pigeonhole us in obsolescence, it, it, it's really about solving supply chain disruption. So before this video started, we talked a bit about the customer model, and I found it slightly confusing because it, it, it seemed to imply that both your customer and your supplier can be the same entity, let's say, for example, Infineon. So if I'm not mistaken, they would, would they offload their excess to you and you charge them for that, or do you buy it off them and then sell it back? Is that, how does that work? No, no, so, um, and offload is probably a rather kind of crude term to use. So no, we, we're an authorized distributor and a licensed mm. manufacturer. Mm. So if you take a company like Infineon, who's been a partner of Rochester for yep. over two decades, okay. Yep. So we work together with them to provide a range of 
value added solutions, yep. whether that's managing excess inventory, yep. whether managing the distribution rotations, and whether that's working together on more legacy programs. Yep. Because for example, what we want to do is we want to enable our suppliers, our partners, and their customers yep. to focus their time and attention on innovation. Yep. Okay? So during supply chain disruption, like the pandemic, yep. you know, which there was a lot of ultimately duplicate ordering, yep. right? Customers are looking for parts. Together we want to make sure that those customers are able to get parts in an authorized manner. Yeah. Okay. For, for for all manner of reasons in terms of quality, reliability, traceability, mm -hmm. but also secure supply chain. So it's, okay. So it's, it's more of an extension of that customer. So and then that's it, that's your service to them, which is saying we're, it's not it's not that you're Infinium, but you will become almost almost kind of like an extended part of that. So you can keep those parts, like I say, in an authorized chain. Mm -hmm. The parts are stored correctly to their standards. They are. They are uh, 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 authentic parts because they're not been bought from a third party seller. They're That's straight right. from their factory. So I think I think when I meant the term offload, I kind of meant I think what I'm trying to say is like when they let's say let's, let's say there's a time of peak stock, but they, they can't sell it. You know, it's a good time for them to then give you those parts to maintain to protect. To, so, so that if another customer wants those parts, they can get it from you. If there's not enough parts in the future, they can get it from you. And it, and they know it's basically the same as getting it from Infinium. It's just that you're you've been authorized by them to provide those parts. It, it's the same as getting the parts from the manufacturer direct or any other authorized distributor that represents them, yeah. right? And, but then when, you know, the part, parts become more mature, mm. right, then we may, be, we may be able to engage to continue the supply yeah. via um, either inventory that we've transferred over mm. or, or manufacturing that we have taken over. So to say that Rochester as a distributor, I don't think goes far enough in terms of describing your service because a typical distributor will just put parts on the shelf and they be in the correct storage, but they'll take the whole chip, put it in a, in a tray, sell it to a, uh, mm -hmm. to a customer when they need it. But what you guys are doing, you're going much further in the sense that you know you store the dyes. You actually, I believe, you actually have the manufacturing processes as well mm -hmm. to then to then package those dyes. That's right. So it's much it's much more involved. It's much more um, involved in that supply chain. And, and you know, um, I've been with us 17 years mm -hmm. and. Uh, our our value proposition mm. uh, is a is a blessing, yeah. and it can be a little bit of a curse because we're misunderstood. Okay, mm. sometimes maybe people don't understand the authorized nature of our company. That everything yeah. we do is is under an agreement with the supplier. Yeah, and so for example, you know the our ability to maintain parts over the long term in an integrous nature. The, the, there's a little speciality in that as well. So mm. I would never ever decry the. The, the supply chain mm -hmm. fulfillment element of yeah. that, which is one of the hats that I wear, right? We, you know, inventory optimization, uh, bacon dry pack, uh, we're high service split packs, cut tape, for example. Every every product that comes into our facility is is X-rayed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, the package uh, for quantity integrity. Every shipment that we ship to a customer goes through that same process on the outbound. A QR code is put on the is put in the box, and we, we maintain a digital image in the ERP. But coming to the manufacturing thing, it, it's really about a continuous source of supply. So a customer will come to us because they need a product. It's that yeah. simple. If it's if it's finished inventory, then it's in stock, immediate dispatch. Yeah. If it's a part that we we are able to manufacture or we manufacture for stock, that might be it. we've obtained the silicon, the wafers from the original manufacturer and we do the, the, the back end, the assembly and test. Yeah. Or it can be that we, we are, we've got the GDS2 and we are fabricating waivers for a continuous source of supply. Yeah. Or it can even be we've got two design centers where customers, where they, they really have to have the, the same part. Maybe it goes into a civil aviation application where flight testing that plane would be entirely prohibitive. We are able to refabricate silicon, target a foundry, package and test that, and sell it copy exact with uh, same edge rates, timing, uh, and no change to the software. So in the end, ultimately, we're, we're, we're trying to provide a part, but it's the part that the customer needs that they've selected in their application so that they're not having to spend money yeah requalifying, recertifying, they're able to work with our suppliers, our partners, on driving new innovations. So you're right, you know, people think of us as a distributor, that is ultimately what happens, but that point it's is reached in a number of ways. It's a lot more involved, a lot more involved. Yeah. And I mean, I would imagine that storing dyes and wafers is, it, it, 
is actually, I would have thought it's harder to get a counterfeit part through that supply chain because, and then, because if you've got the whole dive directly from the authorized distributor, it's, it's, it's not easy to counterfeit a die, you know, in the same way that it is for, for, for to, to lift a part from somewhere well, else. It, it, I think it's an important point, right? Um, so if you go to rockalike.com, we're not, mm. we're not listing a range of testing services to mm. validate a part. We're not saying, you know, scratch it, bite it, whatever, mm. right? Forget all of that. 100% authorized, world's largest in-stock um, die bank, world's largest in-stock product portfolio, 100% traceable to the original manufacturer. Yeah. Period. Okay. Yeah. So forget any any risks associated with supply chain security. And I, maybe just touch on how we got into manufacturing in the first place. Mm. So, you know, our, our company was founded in 1981 to provide an ongoing source of supply yeah. following EOL. Okay. Typically, finished goods. In the 90s, Intel approached us because they wanted to to exit the military market, mm. the ceramic pack package military market yeah and they needed they needed a couple of things they needed to f work with a partner that they already knew and trusted and it, they wanted domestic onshore manufacturing for supply and chain security so Rochester being the more you know through life supplier they approached us and we we built a, a packaging and testing facility and we transferred all all the production to Rochester and that yeah. was the testers the jigs the fixtures the, the, the packages, the tooling, the lead frame, the tooling, and the actual engineers who run that mm. line for Intel moved to Rochester. That began our manufacturing journey, and today we still supply those parts into critical um, military applications. So as the geopolitical situation has evolved, um, onshoring, for example, supply chain security, mm. uh, security of IP, the irony is, is that we never left. That makes sense? And, and yeah, and not only that, but the more when I think about the situation with Intel, by having having you guys step in to take care of those end of life products where where the military still needs mm -hmm. those parts, but Intel can't support uh, 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 that that manufacturing line, Intel is then able to save money, invest in the new technologies, and then continue to advance. And not yeah. only, so the weird thing about the obsolescence is that actually by stepping in and handling that it allows companies to then innovate for the next for the, for the next uh, generation of technologies because now they can go right i can forget about all yeah. the old parts i used to make i don't have to worry about supporting them that's right. just got that absolutely down uh and that's supporting all our customers and then we can focus on just making things better so before we wrap up this video i've just got one more question for you for the audience who are watching this video if they want to get involved with your solutions that you provide what would you recommend that they do okay so a couple of things we we, we we want to meet the customer where they're at, okay? Whether they want to meet face-to-face, -face, whether they want to uh, over the phone, digitally, online, or any combination. So, you know, we, we're located in all of the major markets. We've got four offices in China, two in Japan, Singapore, India, Vietnam, uh, across the Americas and Europe, UK, Germany, uh, Scandinavia, Turkey, um, Eastern Europe, for example, right? So. We, we, we want to provide all of that to everyone. And that's typically how customers do want to engage with us. They want to meet face-to-face, -face, build relationships. They want to have someone to talk to, right? But they also, you know, just want to go online in a registered, secure way to upload their information, to maybe place an order electronically, to get a copy of an invoice or a statement of an account. So um, www.rockalike.com is, is a, an easy gateway to begin where you can create a registered user experience or you can find your local contact. Fantastic, thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us thank today. Thank you. Thank you very much.